Hi, and welcome back to another episode of The Breakdown with Bethany. I'm Bethany Braun Silva, and today my guest is Gretchen Rossi, a former cast member of The Real Housewives of Orange County, who's also an entrepreneur and a loving mother. She's also famously engaged to another cast member from The Real Housewives of Orange County, Slade Smiley. So we're going to be talking about her not being married, living in sin, and different ways you can keep kids safe with an amazing life-saving device. You're not going to want to miss it. So we were just saying like mom life, I actually have to run and pick up my kids. So we're going to jump yes. right in and your daughter Skylar is about two and a half. She's going to be three in July. So I just want to know how is that going? I mean, pandemic, you know, toddler, all of it, what's going on? So, um, I love to say that it's like that juxtaposition of it's the most incredible thing ever that you will do, but it is literally the hardest thing you will ever do. It is. Um, it's all about, you know, maintaining a balance and, you know, good time management, which I still haven't got down. Um, and it's just, it's, it's so much harder than I think I thought it was ever going to be. I think I had this vision of, you know, everything's just going to be, you know, rainbows and butterflies and I'm going to have this kid and it's just going to be so much fun. And then you like wake up and your house is a disaster and you have no time for yourself or self-care. And you have this little person that needs you 24 seven and you're just like, ah. <laughs> I know. I mean, it's a, it's a lot. It's definitely a lot. And actually when I was preparing for this interview, I was, you know, researching about, you know, different interviews you've done and you talked open, openly about postpartum depression and that even like, that may have even been a reason why you might not even be getting pregnant right away. So I want to know sort of what was that like in the beginning and how has it evolved till now? Because one of my favorite things that I say a lot is that postpartum, that postpartum period is not six weeks. It's not even six months. No. It's like every, the, the time from you becoming a mother and beyond my kids are six yeah. and 10. And I feel like I'm still in the postpartum period. So tell us a little bit about how it was then opposed to now, almost three years later. So, I mean, I will say it's definitely a lot better. I mean, I really had bad postpartum depression. And I think for me in particular, because I was older having her, I think that was the hardest part was, um, you know, I went from almost 41 years of my life, waking up and my life being about me and, you know, about what I wanted to do and where I wanted to go and how, where I was going to travel to next or whatever it was or what career move I was going to make. And when you have a child, it just all stops like right then and there. And you're like this milky machine and, it just, it's, it changes every single aspect of your life. And you think, okay, I'm, I, I got this, like I can be a working mom. I can just feed this into my, you know, everyday life, but really you just don't realize how much energy time that it requires. And you are so exhausted, you're sleepless. And I think that, that all adds to it. Now I also had a C-section and I think when you have a C-section, at least I learned after the fact, um, and I, and I didn't have a C-section by choice. It kind of happened in within 24 hours of having her, um, that when you go through, when you have a natural birth through the birth canal, there's certain hormones that are released. And when you have a C-section, there's certain hormones that aren't released. And so your body kind of goes into almost like a hormonal shock, if you will, and your body just gets way off. And so I think for me, it was a combination of, I had done four and a half years of IVF and I had so many hormones in my body from that. And then I had this C-section and my body just, it just freaked out. And I, and the chemical imbalance that was happening in my body was something I couldn't control. And that was another frustrating part is I consider myself a very happy go lucky, you know, up, you know, upbeat person most of the time. So the fact that I was so down and depressed just was really hard for me to wrap my mind around. And being that I wanted her so badly, you feel like this guilt on top of it. But thankfully I started using our BioRain CBD products and I, and I feel like I naturally was able to get myself better. I did not want to do the pharmaceutical drugs, even though my pediatrician and my, um, gynecologist almost had to do an intervention with me and they wanted me to take the pharmaceutical drugs. And I said, no, I'm going to try the natural way. I took our CBD products. Thankfully, I, I came out of it. But like you said, and I'm sorry, this is such a long answer, but like you said, it's strange because you almost go through these like periods of where you feel like you're back in postpartum because of all the different stages that your children go through. And it's like, you have to completely rearrange 
your schedule or your thing or like, okay, now they're, now they're potty training. So you have to like figure that out in your life or, you know, you, they're, they change their sleeping schedule or whatever happens. So it's just constantly bobbing and weaving with these kids. <laughs> no, you absolutely said it. I mean, I think that's one of the things that surprised me too when I became a mom. It's like we get over one kind of hurdle and then we're thrust back into another. And one of the ones for me, and I know you speak about this a lot and you can certainly relate to it. I mean, you represent this amazing product is that, you know, your kids are now starting solids. Like what is, so now there's like a whole, like you're so happy is a huge milestone, but you know, as they enter toddlerhood, you're cutting up food. And then there's that concern about choking, which I know is like, you are such an amazing spokesperson for, and I actually had never heard of life back. So yeah. please, please tell us about life back. I want to tell our viewers that we are filming this. What is today, Gretchen, the 15th, the 14th, but you know I don't even know what is we it? don't what even is know the day. It's, it doesn't matter. Awesome. But, I have no idea what day it is. <laughs> right. But 328 is a really important day. So I want yeah. you to tell us all about that. Okay. So uh, March 28th is National Choking Awareness Day. And this is a really um, important thing for me to share because I had a pretty big scare with Skylar when she was one. It was her first birthday and um, it was a mermaid theme party and we had all this sequins tablecloths everywhere and the th sequins on them were really pretty large about the size of a quarter. And a couple of the sequences had fallen off of the tablecloth and were on the ground and she had picked up one of those sequences and put it in her mouth. Now, thank God I happened to see the reflection of the sun and see it in the back of her mouth. And I like freaked out and I went running across the pool because she was taking pictures with these more mermaids we had there. And I like fell on the ground, jumped in the pool, like started sweeping her mouth. And everyone's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And I'm like, she has something in her mouth. And they're like, no, she doesn't. She's fine. I'm like, no, I saw it. There's something in her mouth. And thankfully I like went way up in the back and I got the piece of sequence out. Now, when something like that happens to you, you're physically shaken. I was crying. I was shaking. Like all my friends came up to me. They're like, it's okay. She's okay. Da, da, da. And I'm like, I know, but she would have like choked and more than likely died on that. And, and that's when I went into this deep, like research, if you will, trying to find a product or trying to find solutions in case, God forbid, I was ever in that predicament again. And the Heimlich maneuver didn't work or the current choking protocols did not work because you think of like a little baby like that and doing some of those current choking protocols is a little scary on a small little being like that. So that's when I came across LifeVac and I have one of them here because it's easier to explain when I have it in hand. This is a LifeVac device and what this does is it goes over your nose and your mouth like so and it's literally a place push and pull and it dislodges anything that might be obstructing your airway. And it is saved already just under 300 lives. It's not only for children, but it is for adults. The, the, um, the kit that you get comes with the child mask and the adult mask, which is so nice. You don't have to buy two separate masks. And I keep one in my car and I keep it right here in my kitchen closet here in case, God forbid, anything was to ever happen with her. I take them to birthday parties. I take them to restaurants. I take it everywhere with me. And it's almost like a sense of peace I have um, knowing that I have this as a backup plan. We always recommend that you try the current choking protocols to begin with. And then if that's not working, you can pull this out. There has been so many viral videos or videos that have gone viral of people in their home videos pulling this out and saving their child. EMTs, we've had firefighters use this. We've had a police, a retired policeman use one of these devices on a 10 month old that was choking on a pancake in a restaurant. He just happened to be one of the people dining there and he ran out to his car and saved this baby's life with this. So this truly is something that works. This ups your chances of survival from 50 to 70% to 99%. And I mean, I don't know about you, but as a mom, why the heck would I not have one of these everywhere I go? Just, you know, as a safety precaution. So for National Choking Awareness Month, we are doing what's called Save a Life Challenge. I just posted it today. So if you guys hear about this, please repost it. It's just a slide that talks about saving a life and having an important device like this in your home. And it's really just about spreading the word because at this point, like you, like me, I had no idea a device like this was even available to us. So now that I know this, I just want to tell everybody, use my voice, use my platform to let as many people know about this because it can save not only your child, 
but also a loved one. The seniors, your husband, I had a friend whose husband passed away right in front of her and her children choking on a piece of steak. So it's just silly. This should be like a fire extinguisher in our homes, on the airplanes, in our businesses. This should be everywhere. I totally agree. I mean, we've had not quite a, a scare as you described with your daughter when she, at her birthday, but we've had, of course, I mean, we've had scares, you know, too. I mean, it's something that kids are learning and we're watching and it could happen so quickly. So guys, be sure to go over to Gretchen's Instagram and check out, check that out. But yeah, while- they, can, they can also find it at lifefact.net if they want to go directly to LifeFact. And then if they use code Gretchen10, then they can actually get 10% off. And I say that because I just don't want you guys to have any excuse not to get it. Like, I don't, you know, my code doesn't help me. It's not about that. It's about just get one. Don't think about it. Just have it in your home as a safety precaution. That's, that's the most important to me. I just, I, I've received so many DMs and emails from people saying, thank God that you posted about this because it saved my grandchild, this saved my friend, this saved this. I, those kind of emails and text messages or DMs is everything to me. Yeah. And I just, I just got me thinking too, because in that moment, you're so stressed and you're not really thinking like you might have practiced that Heimlich maneuver, that infant CPR, but to have that device, which requires almost like no, no thought process. It seems so easy to use. It's just sort of like a no brainer. Like I'm going to have three. I'm going to buy three. Yeah, yeah. And that's why I have one in my car and in my house, because a lot of the times when you're running out the door, you're not you forgetting about it. So I literally have it in the back of my car so that when I'm pulling out the stroller or the diaper bag, it's just right there and I can grab it and I can't tell you how many times I've been at a party and like kids especially when you're doing like Super Bowl parties or stuff like this and there's a whole table set up of like vegetables or, or, some, or a hot dog or something like that fourth of July when there's things there and kids are up there just reaching and they put something in their mouth and all these parents are talking we're not even paying attention yeah. to what's happening and next thing you know they're choking it's like can you imagine if one of your friends had that available and was able to save your child or you were able to save somebody else's child? I mean, what, what a cool thing. So, yeah, that's great. I mean, I love it. I'm de- like I said, I'm going to get them, but while I have you here, I have to switch topics just a little bit because I, my husband and I, she's my, he's my now husband, but we were together for a long time and not married. And we had two boys before we got married and decided like this really marriage wasn't like, like wasn't a priority. Like the kids were the priority and all that, but I got like super pressured. <laughs> to, I yeah. think like I got pre- so you're famously not married, right? Like <laughs> not in a negative way. Like you even did yeah. a podcast about it. You guys have been engaged. Like even your engagement, the way you proposed was so not traditional. So I wanted to like talk to you about that almost for like my own personal <laughs> like thing. Love like it. I love what it. Is that, what is that like? Have you gotten judgment? Do you feel like you're kind of like breaking a taboo or doing something taboo or breaking a, a stigma? I just have to, I'm just so curious because I love it. <laughs> yes, yes. You know what? For us, it never was about like, let me prove a point. It really yeah. wasn't about that. Um, Slade and I knew four days after being together that we were in love and that we wanted to be together for the rest of our life. We could just feel it in our soul. Um, and when we got engaged, we had every intention of getting married and we actually even picked a date and then he got booked to go do a mini series down in Mexico. And it was during that time period. And then we kind of didn't realize that it was, um, what was it? Memorial day weekend. And so a lot of our friends and family wouldn't have been able to come at that date. So we were like, ah, so we kind of just decided, okay, we'll pick another date. Well, then we just got so heavily involved in IVF and that whole process that and that is very expensive IVF process is very expensive so we just decided you know what we're not going to put all of our you know money into a big wedding where we really rather have this family and we already felt like we were married we felt like we you know it's like we didn't have to have a piece of paper and a big expensive wedding in order to prove that we were together and in love and so that's really what it came down to for us. It was more about just not feeling the need to have to have like this marriage certificate to prove that we were loving and committed. But with that said, we're not against marriage at all. And as a matter of fact, I mean, you know, we've already made our commitment before God and with each other. And, um, and so to me, I feel like we're married. I call him my yeah. husband. He calls me his wife. We don't, we don't think of it as anything other than that. We truly, Um, value each other at that level we just don't feel the need that we have to go necessarily make it a legal thing 
And one day we might, I mean, honestly, Sky right. might just be like, mom, dad, I, you know, I want you to be, you know, officially married. And we'll be like, okay. So that's what happened with us. We, so yeah. my husband's Catholic. And when we were getting our son baptized, I mean, first of all, that was like a, in and of itself, a little stressful because yeah. we were married and we were going yeah. to the Catholic church yeah. after yeah. we baptized our son. Yeah. So, but the priest said, he's like, okay, you know, that's fine. You're, he was very kind and he, but he was like, when your child grows, it might be something that offers them a little bit more comfort and security. Yeah. So we'll see what Skylar says. Yeah. Yes, we'll see what she says. But like I said, I mean, him and I already kind of had a private ceremony. I mean, we haven't really talked about this much, but we already did a private ceremony, him and I. Um, Sky was actually there and we made our commitment before God with um, super important people in our life. And that's really what matters. So awesome. I love it. And so speaking, my final question, question to you, Gretchen is like, you are such, I love your style. You're so fashion forward and you have this adorable little girl. So tell us about all these like matching <laughs> moments because you do it so well. Is Skylar, um, does she love it? Or is she still kind of too young to know that you guys are doing like this awesome match? Right. right? <laughs> So she went through like a little bit of a, um, I don't know how to explain it. As an, as an infant till about, you know, eight months, she had no clue. And it was just like, oh, this is fun. We're in mommy and me matching outfits all the time. And she, but I shouldn't say no clue, but she was just like, yeah, whatever. I'm, an, I'm a baby, right? Then at about one till about maybe two months ago. So like two months and two and a half, something right around there she just was not having it. Like she was over it. Right. And she was just like, no, I don't want to take a picture. I don't want to match. I don't want anything. And then all of a sudden at two and a half, she wants to look like mommy. She wants to sit at my makeup chair with me. She wants to do her hair. She wants to get dressed in pretty dresses. She wants to match mommy. She wants to take pictures. So now it's starting to get so much fun because she's really into it now. And she, we got her one of those like fake little phones, you know, that is like a target and it has a thing where it's like, dit, 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 dit. and so she's like cute, like take pictures, mommy smile. And then she like smiles and we take one together. So it's really cute now because she's into it, but it took her a minute. And I was just like, you can't not be like a fashion girl if you're my daughter, right? <laughs> right. I'm so happy that she's into it again. I hope it yeah. lasts a really, really long time. Gretchen, thank you so much for talking with me today. Yeah. Let's remind everybody where they can go for that life back information. Also where they can find you on Instagram. So on Instagram, you can find me at Gretchen Rossi and then lifeback, you go to lifeback.net. You can use code Gretchen 10 to get a percentage off and save a life. Great. Thank you so much. Well, great to see you.